Welcome back, everyone. We got another lesson today, and today we're going to do some fun stuff. This is stuff I've been waiting months to get to, and I think we're finally at the point, or at least I know I'm finally at the point of uh, start doing bone animations. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to research how to do it, how how it works, and there's a lot of there's a lot to it. In all honesty, it's simple in in, in, a, in a certain way, and it's complicated in another way. Um, uh, so. This one Stack Overflow question uh, from G-Man, or his answer, was one of the best bare bones example of how to do bones. Um, uh, and the, the example, he, he has code and everything else. It was good enough where I can be able to take apart and understand it, uh, even though some of it, for some reason, did not apply to 3D. It didn't work for 3D, but, um, but it got me like 90% there. So I'm going to break this down and really go through building this example, but in 3D. And uh, so I want to really say shout out to G-Mod, G-Man, I think, G-Man, for a, a great uh, answer on Stack Overflow. And for, uh, I guess, G-Man is the one who asked it to begin with. Okay. <laughs> so um, another good article was from uh, Brandon Jones. Uh He's, if you guys know WebGL, he is the man of WebGL uh, for Chrome. So um, uh, this his article was able to help me piece together the remaining things I need um, to kind of understand and get this lesson and get this prototype working. Um, so yeah, if you take uh, this bare bones 2D example plus some of his uh, ideas and um, explanations of uh, this thing, you you get to go. So definitely, those two items are worth reviewing after. Um, I guess you're done watching the video. Um, so let's get down to it. Uh, no, I don't want that. So um, let's see. Uh, let's go to do some core changes first. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit of not that too many to be honest. Oops. All right, so one of the first quick changes we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to uh, our VAO, and we're gonna add this new line of code. Um, I was doing this in objects, and I thought, you know what, final, I should do this for me, uh, so I can just stop doing this every time I create a new uh, rendering type of object. So all it is is check to see if the count is zero, if the vert is, on, is um, not defined, it just does. It just copies the count because we need that out count, um, that final count to for our renderers to know. It's like, is there any actual data to render? If there's no data to render, it's not gonna. Do, it's not gonna try to do the draw, uh, a thing. So that's one quick change to the VEO in the core. Um, we got a new function, or actually not a new function. I'm sorry, a new attribute or parameter to our float array buffer. Um, in this lesson, we're going to do instancing. And surprisingly, instancing is actually very easy. The whole point of, the whole thing of uh, setting up an instance is this line of code. That's pretty much it. All you have to do is set up a buffer that is, um, well, like in this case, this is a buffer uh, that's going to do all the instancing. Uh, it's going to hold all the data. So you mark it true or false, and if it's true, it marks this buffer as part of an instance. And it, it just tells you to, to use the, um, each chunk of data. Let's say if it's a float array, let's say if I'm passing in vertices. So every vertice is only going to be used once uh, for all the vertices. So it's a kind of a nice way to kind of just supply. Uh, the whole point of instancing, I guess, is, in case you didn't know, is that let's say if I have a cube, but I want to draw the cube a thousand times, but in different positions. So the idea is that I would create a buffer, like down here, of matrices. That So I'll create a thousand matrices, and then a single uh, draw call is applied to the, uh, the cube. And that cube will then, for every um, 16 bytes, it would execute that cube. So all the verses of the cube will get rendered, but that one um, attribute will fill in for all 
um, vertices of that draw call. So this way, you, like I said, you can draw a thousand cubes and all you have to do is put in a thousand matrices inside a buffer to then it renders each one out. Um, so, so we have a float array buffer that we, we have allowed set up for instance, instancing. And then we're also going to use, we're going to use, uh, like just what I just described, uh, put, setting up a buffer, but we're going to say, uh, save matrices in it. Now i this took me a while to figure out, but, um, Found a found a good example somewhere. I just can't remember where it was. The oddest thing about um, setting up a buffer of matri uh, matrices is that each it, it basically you end up kind of setting up um, four attributes of vect fours. So this what that's what's going on here. Um, it basically it's all the same kind of code of creating a regular uh, float array buffer with the added bonus that you have to initialize um, th uh, three more pointers. So um, it's kind of like when we start our partitioning like uh, large buffers, like I, we did a lesson where we, we, we try to put in our vertices or UI, um, UVs and other bits like all in one big buffer and then you have to partition it. It's, it's the same idea except uh, you know the, the numbers are pretty static. Uh, because you're doing, you're dealing with um, 64 bits of information. So the first uh, vec four starts at zero. The second vec four starts at 16, 32, 48, and that kind of kind of rounds it up. And um, when you set up your a buffer, the the starting location is the actual starting location, and then all you have to do is just add one, two, and three to the remaining um, locations because it gets filled in. So so when you create, so I kind of end up creating my matrix buffer at like index 10. So this way I know 10, 11, 12, 13 will be filled in by the matrices. So the next attribute after that that you apply after will be like 15. So it, it won't be um, incremental. So just keep in mind when you're dealing with the matrices in buffers, um, this is how they kind of have to work. So, so whatever attribute location you kind of hard code, just realize the next three are also reserved for the matrix. Um, so yeah, so I set it up like this. So we have, it, and it is also instance, has the instance feature, and it just marks each uh, buffer attribute pointer uh, as a uh, part of the inst. Um, instance. So this will come in handy. Uh, what's next? So uh, in our render loop, we need to do some animations there because I kind of want to animate the bones a little bit. So to do an animation, I need a constant count forward. So what we're going to do is just when we start uh, our, our loop, we're going to save the current time. We, we kind of save it right for last frame and uh, FPS, but now we're going to save start time because that's going to be a constant. That's not going to change at all. These two do change where this one is going to be constant throughout the entire time this thing has started. Uh, now if you stop and start again, that, that value gets replaced. That's perfectly fine. So we got start time. We're going to add it there in our start function. Next. Uh, in our run limit, we just calculate our current, which exists here, uh, minus that, so we know how much time is since start. And then um, we add it to our callback. So normally our callback, our on draw event, we just deal with delta time. Now we're gonna deal with since start. How much time has start uh, since it started? So run limit has that, and uh, run full has it too. So it's just copying, and uh, we pass it in. And that's it for core. All right, so now that we have uh, our, our instances set up, um, our new matrix four buffer. Now, in the previous couple lessons, I've been doing a lot of store, uh, not store procedures, um, a lot of um, procedure generated content. And we've been using flat arrays and it's, and you know, we do the extruding and everything else. That made life difficult. So, one of the new things we're going to do, I created for, is a geometry class, which is supposed to help us create dynamic uh, meshes, like if we're doing it with through code. 
Um, and then, you know, and keep all the data organized and easy to manage and uh, duplicate and clone and stuff like that. And, you know, screwed and rotate. All the things we did in, pre in the last couple of previous lessons to build King Kai's planet. It's going to be all rolled into the geometry class. And the geometry class is also going to have uh, a geometry uh, mesh, which helps render out the data. Uh, so this class will actually have all the raw organized data and then it has a function that flattens it all out into one flat array. And that flat array can, can be dumped into here and then rendered. Uh, so let's see. Let's go to the top of the function. Not, not, not much has changed. Um, we're going to have a couple of new things because we have uh, our regular DOM shader. We're going to have our skinning shader. We'll go through the skinning shader. Uh, the skinning shader... There's two shaders we have set up. I have the skinning shader, which is what moves the vertices based on the bones. The skeleton shader is what renders our skeleton bones. They're two separate type of things. Uh, the skeleton shader is just a representation of our skeleton. So this way you can kind of see the skeleton bones, where, they, where they're moving to and where they rotate. Um, so yeah, then we set up our materials. Um, our skeleton shader, I use depth test turned off. So this way it renders on top of our, our mesh. Um, so let's go into our geometry shader. And let, let me just quickly say, we're starting off, we're building our cube. Uh, we're building a square that we're going to start um, doing some things to. So the, all that is is four points and it has a, a color code set up as the fourth component. Like, like I said, a lot of things we've been doing. So here's our geometry class. So our geometry class, we're going to pass in our vertices size and our bone size. Um, so basically, we, we tell it, by, if we don't pass anything in, it'll automatically use 3 and 0. Um, so that's very simple. And then we set up points. Now, points is a, is a basic array that's going to hold basically a point struct. And the point struct is actually going to have our vertices, our UVs, our normals, our bones, and our bone weight. But this is all related to a single vert. So our, if you think about it, every single point is a single vert, but it actually contains the, the three floats or four floats that we need for the vertices, the two floats for UV, uh, the three floats for normal. Uh, I think bone is a single float. Well, actually, no, it's, uh, I think, up to four floats. And bone, bone weight is also up to four floats. Uh, that's what bone size is, is how many bones are we going to uh, allow to use um, for things. Uh, now, okay, so because in the, in the grand scale, because you got to think, because we need to keep an index of a bone and the weight of the bone. And the way that um, skeleton meshes work is that you you have a bone, which is let, let me let me start from the from the beginning. Bones and skeletons don't exist. If you remember the the video I wrote about cameras, I said the camera doesn't exist. It it doesn't. Same thing. Bones don't exist. Skeletons don't exist. All we're dealing with is a hierarchy of transformations. That's what bones are. Uh, if you remember the video about um, screen graphs, where we set up the pow child relationships, so this way, you know, we have a parent matrix, a matrix applies to its children matrix, and, the, and it goes further down the hierarchy. That is 95% of what a skeleton um, mesh works. Skeleton bones work exactly like that. They are everything we've done with parent child relationships to build up the screen graph is exactly what's how skeletons work. The only difference is a couple extra mathematical things th that needs to be applied um, to actually make the vertices move where you think the bones are moving. Like I said, bones don't really exist. They're just, every single bone is just a matrix. It's all, it's just a transformation matrix. That's all it is. So, um, so there we go. So, that's the gist of what we're dealing with. So now that we know that we're going to have some bones, we're going to have some verts, uh, the next function is new point. And all it does is just create a new point. So when we tell it new point, um, we pass in the vertices 
like I guess the floats, you know, the, the, the how many floats we need, we know three or four. Uh, so we go in there, we save the verts, and then we create empty arrays for um, the item. And then we push it, and then that's it. Return push. And then our return push is that we kind of just save the index of the item we just added. So just like in a previous line, that when we, we were creating a, like shape, uh, like like paths, we then create an array of indexes, and that's what we're going to do. So, um, so if in here I can say, let's say if I'm doing, like if I set this up to be three vertices, uh, three uh, three floats per vert vertice, we're gonna it's going to loop based on that size. So that means for every vertice, I have to pass in like three floats. So for example, like up here, new point. You got four floats. That's that's one vertice, because I have have this set up as four as four uh, floats per vertice and two bones per vertice. So that's another vertice. That's another vertice, and that's another vertice, and that's our square. So if, just to quickly show you what, how that's visually being represented, it's this. If you remember, this is how we started the tree tutorial. So we're starting again the same way. Um, so that's what, those are the four points that we're creating. And like I said, we're, we were setting up placeholders, which is just going to hold two. This one holds two, that holds three, that hold, that's hold up to four, and that holds up to four. And why four? Because the biggest um, uh, value that we can store in a single chunk of data is four floats. We have a fact four in shaders. So that's why we have the up to four. I think n normally you wouldn't have more than three, but if you have a certain kind of mesh that has, you know, I guess very detailed, um, I don't know, it really depends on the mesh. Um, so like I said, for most often, I think any mesh will probably have no more than three bones. Cause like sometimes if you have, like if you have a, a, a person uh, type of mesh, the neck part might have um, three bones. You kind of have your head, a bone, you kind of have your shoulder bone, and you might kind of have your pelvic bone, all attached to like a vertice that's probably around the neck of the mesh. So that's why I would say three. Um, or that's those are the, the 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 most like probably that's the part that that might be doing it. Oh, maybe the mouth. The mouth uh, is complicated, so you might have uh, a lot of vertices attached to cer certain bones to kind of help move the mouth around. So that might end up being four bones. Um, but like I said, it really depends on the mesh and how it's and this, how the mesh uh, is connected to the skeleton. So we have our points. Uh, set bones um, is basically just let's see. I'm trying to think. There's bone index, bone weight. Is that an array? I think that's an array. So I think those are arrays. So set bones that you you tell it the index array, and it'll set the the bone and weight to those array indexes. So it just quickly goes in and fills in the data. Um, so a nice example would be right here. So you know we're gonna so we're gonna pass in the the list of indexes we just created, and what we want to say is that okay. It's going to use bone zero zero, and uh, the weight's going to be one zero. Um, and why weights? When you're dealing with multiple bones on a vertice, you can't the the amount that it affects has to be divided, and it has to be divided equally. So, if you have like uh, two bones, the total value has to be divided evenly. So if I if I let's say if I had two bones and they're both influencing a vertice, it has to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for both. If you have three, then you kind of have 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And you can have any variation. It doesn't have to be evenly divided. You can have you know it really depends on the, the packaging tool and how you paint the the vertices and like in Blender you kind of paint it. Um, like the, the the influence strength. Um, so it can be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.7. As long as the entire weight equals one, you're good to go. 
Um, so that is the only thing you have to deal with is make sure it is. And if you have a, an application that's doing it for you, then you don't have to really worry about it. it. It should influence it. It should have that value set up correctly to begin with. But if you're hard, if you're coding it manually, just keep in mind that the total weight should be one. So since this is one and this is zero, that means the second bone I set up has no influence whatsoever. It takes total influence from the first bone. So, so that's what set bones. Set bones does that. Clone point, all it does is clone an existing point and returns it. Uh, compile vertices, all it does is takes all the vertices information and compiles one big uh, array. Compile bones, that's the same thing. Creates one big, uh, two big arrays so we can push into our uniforms. Extrude is the same thing from our previous lessons. Now it just works in conjunction in this uh, thing. Um, and uses clone points, so this way you clone the data. When you're screwed, this includes bones, UVs, everything. So whatever you set up for uh, a certain index, when you do an extrude, it actually clones everything. So that's like it makes managing data so much easier. And try loop is the same thing as just building the triangles um, around, uh, you know, like you know, just like in the previous lessons, it's, it's the same thing. Like I said. This is going to have all the functionality over time. So that's our geometry class. And our geometry mesh is very simple. It just extends our renderable, and it just builds our VAO, and that's it. It really very simple. It's just like a lot of our other renderables that we've done. The only difference is that it actually includes a couple of bone-related things, which is just extra buffers and extra uniforms that it fills in. So that is that. So, so when we do this, we set the bones for the default, and then we're going to build the mesh that we want to control. So we exclude, we geo loop, which creates the index, but I'm not rendering the skin. I'm just gonna render the, the points for now. Um, uh, and for every other time we exclude, I'm going to set the bones differently. So every other exclusion, we're gonna have the bones being influenced evenly between two bones, and every other one's gonna be influenced by one bone. And that's just a simple algorithm I put together kind of just to just apply those, um, to extrude and apply different bones as I'm building it up. So once that all said and done and refresh, we have our tower of points. That's gonna be the mesh that we're gonna create. So now the next step is that we're gonna need to build bones. And building bones and a skeleton mesh is gonna be pretty simple. The only thing is that when you build a skeleton, you have to build the bones in the right order. Every parent has to be applied to the list before the child because this, I did not build this as a hierarchy because I kind of, I like the idea of Benjamin, or not Benjamin, ben, Brandon, is using it like a flat array because it's faster and quicker. and and most often, you're always going to have basically everything in the right order anyway. And you might ask, why do I need things in the right order? Because when we're doing the transformation hierarchy, we need to make sure the matrices, the local matrices or the world, the local and world matrices are rendered and or calculated before you deal with the child. So you do the parent and then you do all the math for that. Then you do the child and you do the math for that and so on and so forth. So that's why we have the root, then we have the hip, and we have the head. Um, and each one, so that's the, that's the starting point. Hip is the child to root, and head is the child to hip. Um, so that's why we have the indexes telling it which parent it is. And then we have something called bind pose. Bind pose is we, once you have the position and rotation properly set up uh, where the bone belongs, which I guess I can click save and I can render, refresh. And there's our bones. 
So we have our three three bones. The red is the start of the bone, and the green is the end of the bone. Once we have our bones placed where they belong, we have to save something called a bind post. And what a bind pose is, it's the world matrix of its starting position. So if for some re- like let's say if you're building like a model with the T uh, T pose, you're gonna have um, some bones going left and right in a horizontal way. So you need to save those by default. So those are going to be the defaults. So this way, whenever uh, whenever you change the rotation or position of a bone, it only does the difference from the bind pose. It's kind of like the starting position. So, so if I start at 10 and you moved it to 7, then I know 10 minus 7 is 3. That means you only move 3. And that's what I'm going to pass into um, the vertices to actually move it because I'm not moving it seven uh, places. I'm moving it only three because the def- the starting point is 10, but the new position is seven. So that is the, the concept of a bind pose. It's really just the starting position of a Pacific bone. So let's look at the uh, object. Um, and the skeleton mesh, I guess I can go look through it really quick because that's qu- the easy one. It's just the same as geometry mesh, which is just deals with the, the bones. Um, so, yeah, it just up. So, that it's really, like, like I said, it's the same thing. There's really not much that comes to it. It's just rendering uh, more vertices. Um, the only difference is I'm using um, lines. So, I'm drawing. So, basically, what this thing does is just takes the skeleton information and builds some type of representation of what the bone looks like, in which I'm just using lines for that. So, so yeah, it just verts, and then uh, it passes in the, the offset. And then when it does the update, it gets the flat um, world matrix and then pushes it back to the GPU. Uh, it fills in that buffer again because this is going to be instance. Because uh, the way this skeleton mesh is set up is that um, we're gonna I'm gonna have a single bone, and I'm gonna render that bone whatever bones there is. So if there is like three bones, I'm gonna render that one bone three times, and it's gonna be based on this um, uh this buffer. This buffer is going to hand, hold all the uh, transformation matrix for each bone. That's why the final uh, attribute is set to true. And then you just set your instance size and your instance size is I guess the offset time divided by 16 because it's 16 floats per um, matrix. So it's kind of like when we're doing our uh, VAO, VAO count. It's the same thing except we're going to do this by um, instance size. And uh, the draw of our, uh, an instance is, you know, we define our vertices. And before we have to draw element and draw arrays, now we just draw arrays instance. There's also a draw element instance. But for this case, um, this I'm using, I just want to draw arrays because I have, because uh, I don't have uh, elements. So all you have to do is pass in your VAO count and your instance size. It's basically how many times you, w- how many copies you want to make of this one um, mesh. And that's only the mag- the only magic in the skeleton mesh is which because I'm using instancing, which is it's a great little feature. And like I said, it 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 beats creating. That's why I didn't want to build a hierarchy of things. It's just 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 make copies of it. So that's our skeleton mesh, which is a cool little thing. And then our skeletons. And our skeleton mesh is very simple. And uh, you know, we have our bones, and we just add our bone. We save a lot of information. Just our index the parent name because bones will have names so once we start doing actual animations from from blender or something we need to be able to map the names to actual bones um is skinned i'm not really using that yet uh that was something brandon suggested so i might end up using it uh our position rotation um because that's all we need for bones we don't need scale basically like so we're rebuilding our transformation a transform object but at, at, at the bone level so every bone is basically a transform and we're going to save our local matrix our world matrix our bind pose which is the initial starting point like once all the bones are set up that's the starting point in the in the world it's, it's a world matrix and the offset matrix it will be what the current world matrix 
differs from the main matrix. That's what these two are. Uh, set bind pose. Like I said, it just goes through, um, creates creates the matrices, multiplies them, and then um, oh, and the, the only other thing I forgot to mention is that our bind pose has to be inverted. That is the only uh, speculation. Because if you want to think about how it works, remember, like I said, if I had 10 and I do 7 and we, we do a subtraction, I know it's to be moved by 3. With matrices, you can't do a subtraction. The only thing you can do is multiply. So if you want to subtract uh, with matrices, you invert one and then you multiply it. So I'm going to take the current world matrix and then use the bind pose, which is inverted, and um, multiply each other. And that gives us the difference. It's like a subtraction. So good thing I wrote comments because I totally forgot that part, that the bind pose is actually the invert of the starting world matrix. So that's, that's the bind, what the bind pose is doing. And then we've got update, which copies the bind pose, but just um, sets everything up. So let's see, it loops through, gets the bone. It checks to see if the modification is required. It's just like our transform. And if it doesn't, you know, it like I said, it, it copies a lot, uh, pretty much is a copy of how our transform parent-child works, relationship works, because bones are just transformation hierarchy. Uh, and then get our flat, and I got a flat world. Like I said, this just compiles all the data for our skeleton mesh and for our geometry mesh, because they both use it. Um, offset would be for the geom uh, geometry and flat world space would be for the actual bones that we're visualizing. All right, so if I go refresh, so now the last thing I need to do is show you some of the skinning. So, this is a skinning shader. In our skinning shader, I have it commented out for now, but now they have everything on uh, on commented. Don't need this now. There, there is two examples. I had problems, and then I finally fixed the problem with the original source code. Um, this, what this and this does does exactly the same thing, but does it mathematically slightly different. Um, all it does is applies the bones and its weight to the matrix. So actually, I like this, the, my, the, the second one really more because it, it makes more sense to me programmatically. So the way the way it's going to process is that we, we're going to pass in the matrices for the four, um, the bones, uh, their, their current uh, offset. So the offset gets thrown into here. And, uh, you know, like I said, we got three of them. And for every vertice, we're going to have a bone index and a bone weight. So we're going to use the bone index to know which bone to use. Like, like exactly here. So we're going through our bone array, our mat bone matrix array, and we're going to grab the first bone. And we're going to multiply by the weight. And then we're going to add the matrix times the weight as well. So we take the first bone offset times its weight, and then the second one, and then we just add them together. And that creates our matrix for a bone. So that is how much influence uh, the bone has on the vertice. And then we just add it to the list. Like before, we have projection, we have camera view, we have uh, our model view. Now we just add bone. So like so we have our, our position, our vertice position. We just say, okay, move it to where the bone says it should be. Then we move move it like everything else. Uh, this example is does the exact same thing. The only difference is is that it does it with the position. So it takes the bone matrix, multiplies it by the position, and then multiplies it by the weight. And it does the same, it, like I said, it does the same thing. 
I think this is kind of a waste. This is like this is that example. Uh, this one. He does it that way. It's based on position. Messing around, I realize you don't need to do that. I can just multiply and add um, the, the the matrices and then just apply it onto the list of matrices that, that happens. So this, to me, is a lot cleaner um, than uh, this way of doing it. Because it feels like it feels like you're, we're doing more multiplication where we don't need to. Because we're multiplying uh, two vec fours with two matrices, and then we have to add it there anyway. Uh, again, so to me, it's, it feels like it's one less or two less. Um, I guess I don't know, but it, to me, I like this is cleaner. This is all the bones, and just apply the bone matrix to the rest. This to me seems like the cleanest way to go about it. Click on save. And this is just our regular code. Uh, and the fragma shader is very simple. It's just the color, nothing more. And uh, our skeleton, this is what renders our skeleton. And uh, our, here's our offset. And this is what does the instancing. And remember I said that uh, in instancing, and we need to do like a matrix in, inside an actual attribute buffer, like I said, it starts at 10, then 11, 12, and 13 are are, are occupied by this because it, it ends up creating four attributes of uh, VEC4s. So if I were to actually add another attribute, I would have to do two, then, 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 then. I have to set it at 15 because those two are preoccupied. So that's why I put it at 10 because it's kind of out of the way. So this way I kind of have more room to add things uh, be before it. So just keep in mind that when you're dealing with uh, buffers with, mat with matrices in there, they take up four attributes um, to fulfill. And um, so, yeah. And uh, so for every instance, this gets filled in once. And then it, just like the bones, we just apply add it to the list uh, of matrices that multiplies our vector. And that's about it, and that's it. That's really all to it. So if I click Save, if I go back. So that's pretty much the gist of it. So let's, so at, now that you have a skeleton, and I have everything explained to you, uh, let me set the rotation of the middle bone. So if I set the rotation of the middle bone, as you can see, the bone moves, but not the vertices. Because remember, right now, I'm actually just setting up the bind post. That's what I'm doing. Um, oh, that's right. I can do it this way. That's right. So with all the skeletons set up and with the bind post already set up, let me rotate the second bone and I guess I have to do a skeleton update so once I change this once I change the the bones I do an update click refresh now if you can see the vertices actually move to this bone because I move the center bone by 45 degrees now if I want to I can then move the third bone and move that by 45 degrees as well Quick refresh. Oops, where are you going? No. Refresh. Now this one bends 45 and this bends 45. And just like child and relationship uh, child parent relationships, everything rotates on its local matrix. So like like this is the child. So this is already moved 45 degrees in this direction, plus another 45 degrees its own direction. So basically from its original bind pose, this bone has actually rotated 90, deg uh, 90 degrees. So that's, and, there, and there's our, there, there you go, moving the bones, and it actually just automatically moves the vertices along with it. So now that we did that, now we're going to the finale. So now that we have, we, can, we have bones, we have vertices, and we can move the bones and the vertices will move along with it. Now we can try to animate. 
So what I'm gonna do is do simple thing. I'm going to just, I'm gonna use our new uh, sense start. I'm gonna shrink it down to a very small value. And I'm going to do a sign. And the reason why I'm going to do a sign is because I want a value between negative 1 and 1. So it's, like I said, S is, we updated the, the render uh, loop to have a constant f number to keep going straight. So if we keep going straight, we could, we'll, we're using the sine wave, we'll always go back and forth between 1 and negative 1. So the idea is that, f and since we're using time, it is then kind of independent of the frame rate. Because if the frame is slower, time still goes. So we'll move further along the animation. Um, doesn't matter if the frame rate slows down or not. So that's why I kind of did sense time uh, based on time to basically uh, make it frame rate independent. Kind of like how we use del delta time to also make it uh, f uh, animation frame rate independent. But you use delta time for different types of animation, where this one I constantly need to do uh, something back and forth um, in, in a constant loop. So that's why we built it this way. So I just need a small number because if, well, I'll show you, the the big number makes the animation go really fast. So if we if I shrink down the number, it still actually slows down the animation. So that's why I'm slowing it down to an, a reasonable value. It's kind of like the rate value. So what I'm trying to do is um, rotate by 90 degrees back and forth between 90 and negative 90. So that's what I'm doing. And then uh, B2, bone 2, and rotation is a uh, quintorian. So I'm going to set up, say, okay, based on the x axis, I want to do rotation. So if I click refresh, there you go. Now that bone is animating and it's moving all the vertices in relation to that bone's rotation. So like if this was an arm, like the armpit would flex. So that's why you kind of see them getting closer and further apart. Is, you know, because if you think like an armpit, it's going to flex based on where your arm movement is. Uh, so if I set up the second, let the second bone animate, it's going to animate on the same axis in the same rotation. So click refresh. Now you see the bone animating and you see the vertices animating along with the bones. And there you go. We got some bone animation going. And let's say if you wanted to speed it up, just change the rate. And now it's way too fast. Um, I guess to make a reasonable speed up, maybe seven. Refresh. There you go. It's a faster pace. But again, I'll keep it at two. That's a kind of a nice speed, nice slow speed, or you can kind of see it rotate. And there you go. That is bone animations with matrices and instancing, and we're rendering out our skeleton along with our vertices. It's like we're we we a lot in this one uh, video. Um. So. Uh, if you have any questions, I know this is a complicated subject. It took me a long while to, to figure out and to build this prototype. Um, so I guess this is a really nice example, 3D example of um, G-Man's example. Um, so basically, he does the same thing. But this is a 2D, and we're doing 3D because that's all I care about. I care about 3D, not 2D animation. Um so this is the starting point. Like I, I was making, I was making jokes about this. Is like telling my wife, I'm trying to make a finger animate in 3D, and this basically is a finger. You know, the finger has three bones. So here's a finger that's totally screwed up, double jointed. It's going back and forth. Uh, so if you think about it, we can now basically animate a finger. This is a starting point from animating an entire body. So uh, as soon as, eventually we're going to get to the point where we're going to just try to animate an entire uh, body, an entire person, uh, making them walk hopefully or, you know. Uh, so this is a starting point. We got one finger. Eventually we'll get a whole arm and eventually torso, legs, body, head, the whole spiel. So I hope you're having fun. This is great. I love the direction I'm going with this. Um, 
I'm going to do another video soon. It's going to be about rate casting because I'm doing a side thing. I'm doing uh, something else. And I spent the last couple of evenings trying to figure out rate casting. And that is that was a nightmare that drove me nuts. Um, so I'm going to break. F so the next video won't be related to uh, 3D animations with bones. It will be about rate casting because I think you know some people might benefit from a shortcut to learning ray casting because tr trust me uh ray cat just uh, the basic starting point of ray casting of just getting the mouse click and then projecting it into 3d space that took a while it, a lot i read a lot of tutorials online it just it took a lot of information to compile it all together to get, get something working I ended up getting the original the right way the way everyone does it i couldn't get it working then i found a, an example of a different way to go about it and I managed to get that to work. And then when I went back to the, the original way, I got it to finally work. So I got two ways to do ray casting. Uh, and each one is slightly different, um, different b uh, benefits. Um, but I like the idea that you have to learn both because every most tutorials show you the first way and they don't show you the second way. So I kind of like that I found the second approach about it. So uh, I think you guys might benefit from it. And if it's something you've been trying to learn and having a hard time learning it and finding the right information, the right math for it, hopefully the next video will help you guys out. So, so yeah, we're going to, so the idea is I might move back and forth between bone animation and um, collisions and stuff like that. That's kind of the reason why I'm doing um, ray, uh, ray casting because I want to start doing collisions. I'm trying to build something. So, uh, so yeah. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I uh, hope you're having fun. Uh, can't wait till we have a full working model. Um, so I guess to see you guys in the next lesson. Don't forget, like, subscribe, have questions, ask away. I'm answering everyone. I'm trying to answer every one question. I think I answered someone's uh, question just like uh, an hour ago on GitHub. Hope my answer helped you out. Um, so yeah, that's it. I got to go to class. I think I'm already late. Um, see you guys at the next lesson.